This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 60 of the Wisdom by Oisa show on the Horse Radio Network. This is Mike Donnell. I'm Casey Wilbanks Coletti. And this is Sophia Gella. Welcome to Wisdom by Wessa on the Horse Radio Network. This podcast is brought to you by the Western and English Sales Association, WISA, which provides the world's largest trade events for retailers, manufacturers, and sales representatives of the equestrian industry. In this podcast, we feature exclusive interviews with noteworthy Western and English personalities, retailers, and exhibitors who you've always wanted to talk to. Don't miss out on all the news for manufacturers and retailers in the equine industry. Today is the second day of the WISA trade show, and Sophia is here to share with us any insights on maybe who's there and how things are going. Yes, it's finally here. We're so excited. So we do have 368 exhibitors on our floors right now of which 227 are on the 11th floor, the temporary one, and then we have 116 on the 14th floor, which is the permanent tenants floor. And then we also have some other exhibitors that are on additional floors. And we had 449 buyers pre-registered, of which 90 were new. And that number is just about the stores who have gotten their badges early instead of on-site at the West Side Trade Show. So yes, it's lots of people here and we're excited. Can you share with us any events that are coming up? Yes, so the Runway Cafe Fashion event will be on the 14th floor today at 12 p.m. And then we have the Social Arena open daily on the 11th floor. Same with the boot shine and the hat shaping. And then we do have the Cowboy Church service on Sunday morning at 7.30, also on the 11th floor, and then that will be on the last day. And then we will have an updated poster report and sort of look into the upcoming events and the next trade show just right after the January 2021 trade trade show. So, yes, it's exciting to see everyone and to just keep going. Great. Thank you, Sophia. They say necessity is the mother of invention. That was clearly the case about 20 years ago when bareback rider Sean Shield decided he needed a riding glove that gave him a better grip. So he invented one, which became a staple on the rodeo scene. Later, Sean connected with an old high school friend, Kendall Matson, and together they started Bare Knuckle Gloves, producing a variety of gloves based on Sean's initial design. Kendall joins us today to tell us that story. Hey, Kendall Matson, thanks for joining us on the Wisdom by Wisa podcast. Good to be here. I had mentioned in my introduction to this segment, they say necessity is the mother of invention. And uh, 20 years ago, uh, Sean decided he needed to invent uh, a new riding glove for his bareback riding activities. And he did so. And now you are an international glove company with an awful lot of lines. Now, that's a big jump. But the reason we want to talk to you is to kind of fill in the blanks a little bit. All right. So we started off in the bareback world and Sean decided to invent a glove. And I think he did that and created a glove. Although I believe from things I've, I've seen you and he were acquainted before that time, but then the two of you got together and took a bareback glove, a uh, rough stock riding glove to an international hand covering business. So that's a fair statement. Yeah, that's, that's pretty close. Um, Sean and I, went to school together uh, back in high school and uh, ran into him a few years ago. And, and he, I was showing him what I had been doing and he showed me what he was doing and I liked his idea better. And I said, well, let me see what I can do to help you. And that's where we got started. Okay. So when you two got together, what you really had was a good line of rough stock gloves, correct? Yeah, so Sean has been developing that uh, bareback riding glove for quite some time, more than 20 years at this point. And he had developed it to the point where it was, with the patents that he, that he gained on it, protected him against anybody else copying it. But he built a glove that was so 
so well constructed and ergonomically designed that he dominated that bareback riding glove market and now controls 100% of it worldwide for all professional rodeo cowboys. Okay. And what is it about the glove that makes it great for rustock riders? But what feature is it that makes it great for the man on the street, the guy working on the ranch, the construction guy? What is it that makes that glove such a desirable product? Well, in all of our gloves that we supply, both work gloves and welding gloves and insulated gloves, we incorporate the patented design that Sean developed in the beginning. Um, And that that design grew over time to from a single wedge in what we call a single wedge in the glove to a double wedge. So there's basically a uh, release in each knuckle that is then filled in with leather. And so you'll see those wedges in our gloves. It's, they're pretty identifiable because of that wedge. We trademarked that and it's called the double wedge design. And that is truly what, what makes a truly good ergonomic glove. With that design, we were able to create a work glove that allows them to use that glove all day. And it, not be stressful on the hand. A lot of our competition are are, uh, up against the same challenge year after year. How do we make a better working glove that guys will leave on their hand? And that's probably been one of our biggest successes is that most people injure their hands when they get tired at the end of the day and they've taken their gloves off to rest their hands and then they forget to put them back on. Where ours don't cause that same type of resistance people will leave their gloves on all day and uh by the end of the day that you know they they they're still wearing them and they haven't injured their hands because of it okay Uh, casey i want to bring casey in for a minute i want to go back to the rodeo type of world casey's been uh involved in rodeo since she was little bitty she knows a lot of guys in the rough stock world she's been to a lot of rodeos but i know she has a take on the importance of gloves casey hop in here (laughs) i do i may not ride bareback horses myself. I'm pretty close to it though. And I understand the importance of a really good fitting glove, not just say uh, riding a buck and horse or riding a bull, but as you were talking about just daily work, I mean, me, myself, I went to feed this morning, pulled a bell of hay down, had a bloody knuckle and I'm like, I don't have my gloves on. Well, I don't typically wear leather gloves because of exactly all the things you mentioned. If they don't fit right, they are just not enjoyable to wear. And so I want you to talk to us about, um, I'm looking at a page on your Facebook, which is on your website, buybareknuckles.com, and there's fast facts. What makes bare knuckles different? Please explain those components to us of the glove that actually makes it fit so well. Well, there's several things. One I've already mentioned, that's the double wedge design, which gives you a pre-curved finger. So a couple of things that does is it it allows you less stress, but it also keeps the gloves from falling off your hands, even if they're loose, because your fingers are, are curved. Your natural position of your hand is a curved finger. And to buy a glove that is completely straight, you're, you're immediately having to stress your fingers in order to close your hand. So th- that's the double wedge design. One of the other things we've done is we, because of that, we're able to take out excess leather out of the palm and bring that a little bit tighter. So when you grab something, it's not wadding up in your hand. And then the third thing, we use a wing um, design for the thumb. A lot of glove manufacturers, to save money, they claim it's better. They call it the Keystone style, where they just cut a hole and then sew a thumb in there. But that gives you a nice place to wear out the threads, and then the glove comes apart right in the thumb. Our our typical warranty is that the leather will wear out before the seams. And in most cases, our competition, the seams wear out before the leather. And that's where we're really trying to make that impact is give people the full life of the the leather that's in the glove. But those are the key designs that make it different. Yeah. And 
you know, it's, it has to improve your grip strength and anything you're doing. And I, and I just can't imagine anybody that enjoys, you know, not being able to really grab onto something and have that strength, um, when you're wearing leather gloves. Um, I guess the other concept I would immediately think of a beneficiary for being your retailer is this glove works, not not one glove, but your products, you have a product for everybody, whether welder or just ranch work, outside work, uh, rodeo competitors. Um, when they carry your glove in their store, they have a glove for everybody. They do if they're carrying all of our sales, including an insulated work glove as well. That we've also, in the insulated work glove, we've incorporated a water resistant uh, leather so that they can get a lot better use in the winter and the colder months so that once they get wet obviously your hands are going to be cold so we're trying to uh, prevent that from happening by using that water resistant leather it's not waterproof but it's it's a lot better than a standard leather i'm sold and i need to buy some bare knuckle gloves now mike i don't know about you well my question is do you have them in a small size that fit casey (laughs) i have pretty big hands you know this, that's a great question because we just finished the extra small and we call it the extra small petite for women with shorter fingers. And we decided not to make a full women's line because there's a lot of women that use our gloves already in our regular sizing. So it's a, it's a non-gender glove, but we do have the extra small and extra small petite and we will have some samples of those in Wessa, and we were getting those in actually tomorrow on freight. So we're pretty excited. Well, I think that's another extension of the line. I, when we talked the other day, we chatted. Actually, you have an international business, do you not? Yes, we do. In We're in several countries today doing very well in Japan with a company over there supporting and building their gloves for them. He's uh, really involved in the camping and outdoor market, and he loves our gloves so much. He's left it up to us to design gloves for him, and then he said, just send them. I know they'll be good. And so we've, we've got four different gloves we're building for him. We've got another company reselling the Bare Knuckles product in Brazil and in Spain, and we have a few others coming along very nicely in Canada. Actually, our market in Canada is positioned to eclipse our market in the U.S. in this next year, and then we'll have to have the U.S. market catch back up. But we do have some great customers in Canada, and we're super excited about our growth there. Now, let's talk, uh, Casey kind of brought this up, but if I am a retailer, uh, I do not have your gloves but I'm intrigued now, and I'd like to consider being a retailer or have you consider me. What's the process and my qualification uh, requirements for me to carry bare knuckle gloves? Do you have a store? That would be the question. And do you sell gloves today? (laughs) We work with just about everybody. We stay away from the larger stores like the Home Depots and the Lowe's of the world, and also Walmarts and those kinds of things. We want to work with small business, individual stores, warehouses is who we prefer to work with because we come from the small business side of things and mainly farm and ranch is where we're focused. That's where we're seeing the most growth and and the most positive attitude. I can't tell you how many times we're complimented on our gloves on a daily basis. It's it's amazing. It's the best product I've ever backed in my entire life. Now, uh, something else that we uh, had talked about earlier that it sounds very logical, but I'm always happy to hear it. The pandemic, as horrible as it has been uh, for everybody, uh, still has not been a dampening effect on your market, has it? It it did at first. So at first when it hit and everybody was shutting down, we a little bit panicked because I just hired a whole sales force and everything else to go out and do trade shows like we're doing at WESA. And I was a little bit panicked that nothing was going to happen, but we had fortunately done WESA last year 
and picked up a bunch of leads and we followed up on those. And by May, it seemed as though the pandemic didn't affect us at all. We grew about 400% last year, and we know that we're going to receive about the same amount of growth this year by by the end of the year. And uh, I'm pretty excited about the additional product lines and other projects that we are working on. Okay, now I'm going to ask a question. You may uh, uh, decline to answer by confidentially, but you mentioned other projects. It would seem to the average person, you've got a glove for everything anybody could possibly use one for, and they're the best they possibly could be. Where do you go next? So our next line of gloves, we've got two, two that are coming out right away. One is a basically the same leather glove we're building with a cut resistant liner in it. And we've been, this has been requested from us from multiple people. We know as soon as it's available, there are thousands of, of uh, sales available to us. And so that has been in the works for almost a year and we're finally getting those gloves in the next month. So we're pretty excited about where we can go with that particular glove in the mining industry and in the oil and gas industry. So that glove, as well as the power, power companies are, are very high on that glove. So that's one. And the second one is a glove that we're designing specifically more like a mechanic style glove with a Velcro strap on it. So it'll be a shorter cuff. Some people don't like the longer cuff because it may get hay in it or or maybe it's because it, it interferes with the sleeve on their jacket or shirt or whatever. So we're designing an alternative glove. It's basically the same work glove, fits a little bit tighter um, and it has the Velcro strap on it so you can really, really put it on tight. Um, and then the third project we're working on, we're working with the U.S. military to design a glove for them. And I have to hold that pretty confidential, but the fact that we're working with the U.S. military directly is pretty fun. Well, and it's another market you can, it's a, obviously that would be a huge market. We will not go into that. Obviously you have some confidentiality issues, but it's interesting to see how a company that makes gloves can expand and grow and use creativity to expand their business. Now, Casey also likes to see how people market. Casey, hop in here. Yes. Speaking of creativity and marketing, I am looking at your Instagram page and I'm, I, I'm blown away by your pictures. Your pictures on social media are precise. They're crisp. They're, they're unique. And I think that is really something we're sharing. Again, if you're a retailer considering carrying a product, this would be one of the things I looked into because when you have um, good posts like this, they're, they're shareable and your, your pictures are phenomenal. Well, thank you very much. Our, our VP of marketing and sales, Anson Gessel is uh, also a, has a major in photography. So he has a very good eye, knows what, what looks good and, and how to position things. So he's uh, done very well at helping us put the right content out for social media. They're, they're very unique and very eye-catching. They really look like they're straight out of a magazine. So again, very important feature to mention. Is there anything else you would like to talk about, about your marketing strategies, or should somebody carry your product, maybe how you help facilitate marketing aspects to um, get the design and the feel and just help your retailers market these products? Yeah. So there's a couple of things is we can do online training basically webinar training to help the salespeople understand what the difference is. Because with our gloves, you are basically re-educating the entire marketplace on what ours are, how ours are different than, than other gloves. And sometimes it's just hard to explain when you don't understand all the attributes of our gloves. So we make a, we have a little fast facts paper that we put out, it's actually a little card so that customers can pull it and read it and see those fast facts right there. And that's one of the things we do. The other is that uh, we are willing to visit stores and do an opening and help train people in person if they have a few stores and, and it's within a reasonable amount of travel for us. We can travel out and attend those stores and really give them some good training hands-on. and 
to give you an idea, we, we opened one of the chains this year. I opened three stores and in each of the stores, we were there for under a day and sold 40% of the product that they stocked initially in all three of those stores. So it kind of gives you an idea that the the product is easy to sell once you understand how to embrace it. Sure. Absolutely. And again, anybody listening, it's buybareknuckles.com. You know, it's a very interesting name, Bare Knuckle Gloves. A, it's easy to remember. You're never going to forget it. But how did you come up with that name? Well, we were talking about what the gloves do for you. And, and we initially thought of our gloves as basically a second layer of skin, an additional layer on top of our hands and our knuckles. And it makes it feel like a covering over your bare hand. And we thought, well, bare knuckles are covered. So we, we thought, hey, let's uh, twist that up a little bit. And actually, Rob, who works for us, thought of the name. And he's a patent attorney as well, or was a patent attorney. He's a patent agent. And came up with the trademark and, and hunted it down and found out that we could use it. And uh, we've been very aggressively developing a a platform for the the name itself. Very easy to remember, but it stands out um, with our logo, who was which was designed by another gentleman that uh, Sean and I went to high school with. So it's kind of fun to take everything from a little small town in Idaho to the rest of the world. What a great little story. I love that. That's great. Okay. Well, I think we've covered just about everything. I have one question. I don't know if you have the answer. It just kind of occurs to me. Has anybody tabulated the number of pairs of gloves you've manufactured and sold? You know, I haven't. I I didn't know if anybody had. I'll I'll bet it's a lot of zeros on that number. Well, it's in the hundreds of thousands of pairs, I can tell you that. Sure. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll put a count on it when we reach a million, which will be pretty soon. (laughs) Yeah, that's so. Hey, listen, I really appreciate the time you've taken. The, the Bare Knuckles story is a, uh, it's a great business story. It's a great marketing story. It's a story with initiative, a great idea, hard work. Um, it's just the kind of stories we like to tell on the Wisdom by Wisa podcast. And uh, it's been so much fun to talk to you and get the inside story on uh, how a glove company becomes what you have become. So again, thanks for your time. I We really do appreciate it. Okay. Hey, thanks for being with us. Enjoyed talking with you. you Good luck to Bare Knuckle Gloves. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. We'll see you at Wisa. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Show notes and links from today's show can be found on the website wisdombyoisa.com. And, of course, we'd love to hear your feedback. There is a contact link on that website. The Wisdom by Wisa show will be published on the 15th and 30th of every month. You can listen on most of your favorite podcast players. You can also listen on the Horse Radio Network app on your iOS or Android phone. You just search Horse Radio Network in the App Store. It's free and super easy to use. Be sure to visit all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Thanks for listening to the Wisdom by Wisa podcast. Wisa, where the industry meets.